This is the graphical forecast for Aviation Tool, or the GFA. It can be found by going to the Aviation Weather Center homepage, www.aviationweather.gov, and selecting GFA Tool from the Tools drop-down menu. Detailed information on what data is available can be found via the Info button, and then clicking on the Tutorial and Products tabs. Now let's take a look at some basic navigation of the GFA. Focusing on the main menu, at the far left there are two main options to pick from, Forecast and Observations, with each having their own set of product tabs to select from. Notice that the product tabs will be different for Forecast than for Observations. To the right of Observations is the Settings button, which allows the user to modify the interface. The Time Slider, located to the right of the Settings button, can be used to advance time up to 15 hours into the future for forecast products and back through the previous 15 hours, which includes the current time, for observations. Other items of note would be the Full Screen option, located in the upper right corner, the Lat Lawn Indicator, located at bottom right, and the Legends at the bottom, which give a full range of possible parameters for each product tab. Further information and details can be found via the Info button near top right.
To get an idea of runway surface conditions, one might use the taste test method. But as it turns out, there's a better way. As GA pilots, we should be familiar with the FAA language used to describe runway landing surface grip, especially if we're planning to venture out into the winter weather. You may have heard words like TALPA, RCAM, or FICON. Well, that's a lot of acronyms, so we'll break things down a bit. On December 8, 2005, at Chicago Midway Airport, a Boeing 737 ran off the end of a runway and into a city street after landing in a snowstorm. The airplane collided with automobile traffic, killing one person and injuring several others. So this accident became a catalyst for the FAA to develop new standards to improve runway safety during bad weather. In October of 2016, the culmination of the FAA's efforts led to what's known as TALPA, the Takeoff and Landing Performance Assessment. This initiative aims to improve the quality of runway condition information and thereby reduce the risk of runway overrun accidents and incidents. TALPA provides a standardized format that gives a pilot useful information to anticipate airplane braking performance. As part of TALPA, airport operators are using the Runway Condition Assessment Matrix, or RCAM. And what the RCAM does is replace subjective judgments of runway conditions with objective assessments tied directly to contaminant type and depth categories. Here's how it works. An airport operator will assess the surfaces of each runway in three equal parts and provide a measured description of each third. Based on the contamination they find, shown here in the left column, they will then use the RCAM to determine the numerical runway condition codes. Now these codes may vary for each third of the runway if different contaminants are present, or if conditions are uniform throughout, the numbers will be the same. Let's say, for example, the airport operator observes that 70% of the first third of the runway is covered with one quarter of an inch of wet snow, 60% of the second third of the runway is covered with one quarter inch of wet snow, and 90% of the last third is covered with one eighth inch of slush. Based on the RCAM, the corresponding runway condition codes would be 3, 3, and 5. You can find this information in the form of a NOTAM or from an ATC facility, flight service station, or airport operator via the CTAF. Now let's take a quick look at the way our example would appear in a runway field condition notice to airmen, or FICON NOTAM. Here's our runway condition codes, as well as our percentages. If less than 25% of a runway is contaminated, runway condition codes won't be generated. Also included in the RCAM is the quality of braking action that pilots can expect for a given runway condition code, ranging from good all the way down to nil, although if it's nil, the airport is required to be closed. When available, ATC will provide the quality of braking action received by pilots or airport management. Hopefully, this helps to demystify the reporting language that comes with the winter weather. And remember, it's still important to file pilot reports on braking action, so review those descriptions in the RCAM and keep filing PIREPs. <laughs>